In the late 70s and early 80s, when videotape was still very expensive, we needed a way to teach, instruct, and commercialize our products. One of the ways we could do that was with film and with tape. And there was a way to do it where we could put them both together. And that's what we did with the LaBelle Duo 16. These were units that were featured in uh, car dealerships and showrooms, maybe even in hardware stores where you could walk by and see a little product demo, maybe about some paint or some tile or some other kind of cleaning product. Well, this one here, this is the Duo 16 that I purchased off of eBay from a seller. And unfortunately, he did not pack it well and it did not survive the trip. It does come on and the light shows as you can see here and you can see one frame of the film, but it sort of um, wasn't packed well. As you can see here on the side, the unit uh, busted apart and now the entire side here is exposed. But in any case, this particular unit, which I won't be able to demo for you because it's busted on the inside, had the ability to project on the wall through this port right here and this lever, or you could project it onto the built-in screen, as you see on the front here. Then there were some controls on the side that allowed you to advance to the next frame or stop or start the program. The cool thing about this is they took 16 millimeter film and in the way you would use film strips like 35 millimeter st film strips which were paired with cassette tape or records, they took a cartridge and put an 8 track tape and mated it with 16 millimeter film in a loop inside the cartridge. So this is the cartridge itself and it literally looks like an 8 track tape has been glued to the bottom but in fact it's been molded as part of the plastic of this cartridge. So I'm going to demonstrate this for you in a different unit, a little bit better unit than the one you see here, and uh, one that actually works. And it's the one I created a trailer for on my channel. And let's take a look at that one. When it was time to train the whole sales force, or in this case, the whole witnessing crew, the whole missionary crew, you needed the Tudor 16, and the Tudor 16 is the exact same product you saw as the Duo 16, except it doesn't have a built-in screen. It's also built a little more durable. I mean, this thing really is a tank. It's got a, uh, a metal cover on the top, and here is your projection lens there on the front with a speaker grill here. And to play the program, turn the unit around, and on the back here is the port in which you would plug the cartridge in. And the cartridge would be inserted just like that. On the top you have some controls. You have a forward and reverse here. You have uh, an off and volume control. Start and stop and you could even control it with a wired remote control. It has a, uh, a headphone jack or really a headphone jack for an external speaker on the side so that you could uh, play the volume even louder than the built-in speaker would do. Now to understand how this operation works we gotta kind of take a closer look at what's inside of this cartridge. So let's take one apart and see what's inside and then I'm going to play you the contents of one of the cartridges inside an actual 8-track player so you can hear what's going on. You see, these are just still frames of pictures, kind of like a PowerPoint on steroids, but really it's a PowerPoint on film. So essentially you need a way to automate that process and tell the unit when to go or advance to the next slide or the next frame of film. The way they did that was they split the tape in half and on half of the film or half of the tape there is the audio track and then the other half is simply tones. So a little tone would be played to advance the film to the next frame and another tone would actually emit to tell the unit when to stop or pause. 
So you could pause your production and your student could take notes or write things down or uh, study some of the material that was on the screen and then continue their learning process by pressing the start button again. And again, here is your on off switch here. Got a, a projector bulb inside right there and your forward and advance controls so that you could manually find your place on the production. So again, let's take a look at inside of one of these cartridges. The media itself is called a compact. So the cartridge, uh, although it's spelled differently, it almost sounds like the computer company Compaq. But uh, in any case, this particular uh, unit has a, all of these units have a built-in mirror here. So nothing is seen on the screen until the cartridge is, is, is inserted because the light is going to hit the mirror here and then light up the film and push it through the, uh, the front lens. So on this one, there's three screws. Some of these cartridges only have two screws. So let's go ahead and remove the screws from the top. And we'll just kind of see how they ingeniously put the film inside here. Now, some of you, most of you probably have seen the inside of an 8-track tape. So you probably think, well, the film is on an 8-track loop, right? On a reel. Well, in this case, no. The film is literally just in a loop on the inside. Now, some of these, if they have more film, the loop is just looping around all inside of here and it just goes around in one big circle and goes on through. So there really aren't enough frames in there to warrant having a reel that, uh, that it would loop in and out on. On the tape side, once again, they made it really easy for us to get into. So all we need to do is remove a couple of screws. One there, one here, and a couple more turns, and she's out. And what you'll need to do is flip it over so that all the stuff doesn't fall out of there. So we just lift it off of there. And there it is. So again, the base of it is just like an ordinary 8-track tape. They didn't use all 8 tracks on there. They've only used 2. So once you uh, remove this reel and put it inside of a standard 8-track tape, you're actually listening to track 2 or program 2 on a standard 8-track player. So that's the next step. I, I'm going to take the film or the, the tape out of here, put it in a standard 8-track cartridge so that we can play it in a regular 8-track player and you can hear the audible tones that are on there because once it's played inside the machine, the Duo 16, you won't be able to hear those tones. So let's check it out. For this demonstration, I have sacrificed this Charlie Rich 8-track tape behind closed doors. Sorry, Charlie. In any case, we're going to go ahead and use this cartridge to play the tape in my JVC 8-track deck, which I'm sure you've seen a hundred times on my channel. Here we go. Your program is synchronized if the tell symbol is now visible on your screen. If it is not, ask for assistance if you need it. Thank each of you for coming and just sitting down and sharing some things with us today because there's been some things that I have been concerned about as a pastor as I've observed our own church because I would assume that uh, possibly the church where we are working together is a typical church. And now that you've heard the contents of one of the tapes, let's look and see where all that tape meets to bring the magic onto the screen. So right here, as you see, in the middle of your screen is the audio head. We have a two-track audio head here, and we have a capstan that meets the pinch roller inside the cartridge. Then you have the film gate right here, and there's a little thing that comes out and pulls the tape down one frame at a time. It does not uh, blank the screen before it changes the, uh, the picture. It just simply slides from one to the next. And I'll pan up so you can see the top, where the cartridge comes in, and that little uh, gold thing you see on the top right, that copper piece, that's actually where it meets the 8-track cartridge part, and 
holds it into place. Our next step is to show you what's inside of this beast and the way to do it is to remove this one screw on the top. This is also where you access the lamp to replace it or service it. So remove that, lift up on this all metal lid and see the inner workings of this beast, this tank. It's uh, mostly metal on the inside. You would uh, have a difficult time finding anything plastic on the inside of here, actually. Uh, so some parts to uh, recognize here. Here is your flywheel for the capstan over on this side with a with a original belt. Didn't have to replace the belt. Over here on this side, you'll see the uh, this is the fan motor that keeps the the bulb cool. Over here in this corner, you have some power circuitry here. You have your uh, lens here, and uh, it can be focused in and out right there. And uh, there is another motor down inside of here. Actually, there's a couple of them. And uh, let me move the camera just slightly to show you that. Back in the day, I used to service uh, record players for the uh, National Library Service, and they had motors very much like this one that you see here. This is a very, very well-made motor, maybe a general general industries motor, not sure. But that, of course, drives your uh, flywheel here. And you'll see that there's a motor right there that uh, does the frame advance. And then we'll kind of pan around here. You can see a little bit more of the uh, the gate and the film advance circuitry. I'll go ahead and flip it on. You can see that kind of advance a little bit. So if I hit forward, it does that. If I do reverse, it does that. Okay. And then uh, over to the right here, we have our amplifier circuitry. And you have the cable going to the uh, head right in here goes to the uh, audio head right there and it's actually connected to it with a uh, with a plug of some sort which is kind of cool and there's your EJV bulb for the uh, projection and your speaker down there on the side so again very well built unit and uh, very exciting piece of technology and now let's watch the unit in operation. I kind of like what they did with this particular uh, program. There is some scenes of a guy at a rodeo and uh, they kind of inserted a lot of extra frames in there and I guess a lot of extra frame advanced tones to kind of make it look like a movie. And uh, you know, it's a little corny, it's a lot corny, but uh, it's kind of cool the way the whole process works. Take a look. Living a life of chasing old rodeos in any old bar stool in town. For saddles and buckles and skinned up knuckles, I'd lay a little money down. I'd drive all night for one more ride to prove that I can still win. Got wild oats to sow, I live on the go. Don't you know I'm a rodeo man? The professional rodeo circuit. For the cowboys, it can mean spending more time in a pickup than on a horse, more losing than winning as the search goes on for the perfect ride, the championship.
my life. I'll be in the world champion steer roper would be the height of my life. If I could just accomplish that, I, I thought I would pretty well have it made. But after doing that, I realized that there was a lot more to life than that. I think that's a lot of people's problems when they set a goal and reach it, and it doesn't include God, well, it's not near what they expected. When Walt's not on the rodeo circuit, there's plenty to be done around the ranch, his home place. Rodeo has grown out of ranch life. We've got our chores around the barn here we have to do every morning. And then there's always cattle to feed or, or see about a doctor right through them. Steer open to me is one of the events that really has grown out of, out of ranch life. Ranch work hasn't changed much over the years. The basic tools are still a good horse, a good dog, and skill with a rope. Oh, I just went with a rope in my hand all all time is uh, when I was growing up. Walter grew up on a ranch down there, and uh, he was a neighbor of ours. And uh, early in the morning, uh, Walter's wife would turn the calves out of the chute, and he would rope uh, maybe two hours that morning. And then uh, he'd go on about his work that day, and then he'd come in late that afternoon and uh, when it got cooler, and uh, he would go back to roping cattle, and she would help him. And uh, a lot of times he'd be roping in dark come. We used to have chickens and pigs and cats around here, and I roped everything. That I started out roping chickens and roped pigs. And I know of uh, roped a tomcat one time and come by my one under the barn over there and uh, I couldn't get my rope off and uh, my mother had to come out here and take a hay hook and get my rope off of that tomcat he was fighting and raising cane I was trying to get my rope off of that cat well the production lasts about another six hours so I figured I would go ahead and cut it short I don't want to keep you that long but in any case uh, you've seen how the machine functions and uh, you have uh, heard and seen its end product so uh, not bad for a machine that's uh, well over 30 years old. Has a little bit of vibration in there in the audio, probably due to the metal of the cabinet. But uh, still yet, very working and uh, very cool. Uh, when I bought this unit, I got like, I don't know, a whole box of tapes. And they're all from the Southern Baptist Convention. And uh, of course the material is really outdated. And the uh, of course the film is dirty and, and has probably has not been stored well over the years. Some of the films that I look, looked at and took apart, the film was actually kind of warped and, uh, uh, you know, melted somewhat, just out of shape. So um, who knows how these things were stored. But obviously this machine was, was taken care of over its life and uh, actually was packed well, unlike the, uh, the Duo 16 that uh, you saw at the very beginning of the video. So anyway... Um, Hope you enjoyed this overview of this uh, amazing old audiovisual product. And uh, did a little bit of reading online, and there was a, a guy on a blog that was talking about how he acquired one of those Duo 16s and uh, some uh, films that were used in like a um, uh, an auto dealer, like AMC Motors dealership, and uh, had a bunch of training films and even product films that were used in the uh, showroom there of that dealership so uh, really kind of cool I think I thought this was just amazing I'd never seen one like it before and uh, thought it looked like a modern uh, uh, well not real modern but uh, say one of the very first video projectors kind of had this look to it and uh, definitely has a cool space AG uh, look to it for a uh, piece of projection equipment so anyway, I hope you enjoy this. Please share this with a friend. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Please leave a comment down below. Click that like button. And uh, thank you for watching and have a great day.